guys, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. So if you guys have been following me on Instagram, I've been sneak peeking a special secret surprise that I couldn't wait to let you guys all in on. And today is the big reveal day. And the news is that Lawn Fawn is starting their own challenge blog. And it's called Lawn Fawn Addicts. And I am so lucky and fortunate to be on their design team. So this is the project that I created for our very first challenge. It is birthday inspired because it's Lawn Fawn's seventh birthday. So I didn't capture this one on camera because I was learning how to work with this brand new die, which it's really easy, but I just had never played with it before. So I decided that I'm going to recreate a second pop-up box card for you guys today. It's going to be completely different, but um, I think it's going to be just as cute, and I hope you guys are going to love it. So I'll be using the new Alfie selfie and the birthday hat from Hang In There, as well as some elements from Party Animal and Gear 2. Just the balloon and the hat from that one. And then I will also be using some of the Perfectly Plaid Rainbow 6x6 that was also just released. I've really been loving this one lately. So the main elements of this pop-up box card I have been coloring during Kathy Rakusen's The Daily Marker 30 Day Coloring Challenge and I always post that on Instagram and on my Christy Gets Crafty Facebook page. Um, so you can check out photos of those if you're interested. But uh, I did need to color in a few accessories to kind of fill in my scene. So I'm starting by coloring a party hat and this little um, blowhorn and the ribbon on one of the gifts with BG11, BG13, and BG15. And I've just been using that BG15 as my darkest, kind of laying in some shadows blending out with the BG-13 and then leaving the BG-11 for my highlight. The next combo that I'm going to use is V06 and V09 and I'm just going to color a couple different elements once again, the present and a balloon. And I'm trying to bring in some of those rainbow colors that are in that rainbow plaid 6x6 paper that we'll be using. So for the gift, I use V09 as my darkest and then blend it out completely with the V06. For the balloon, I did the same thing, but I ended up realizing that I was going to need a third color, so I brought in the V04. The V04 is quite a bit different, even though they are right next to each other on the color chart. So I did have a tiny bit of bleeding as I was trying to blend these colors out. I had to go back and flick a little bit to get them to blend um, a little bit better for how I like to color. I don't like that hard line. Um, so I did have a tiny bit of bleeding at the top, but I just fixed that with a colorless blender later before I die cut the image out. The next combo that I'm using is the R20, R22, and R24. And this is going to give me a nice corally kind of pinkish red color, which matches the paper well. So I'm starting with that R24 and I'm coloring in one of the bows on the gifts and then another gift and the second balloon there. So I'm just starting with that R24 and then blending out with the R22 and then leaving that R20 for my highlight. And this combo works really, really well together. I'm kind of keeping my light source at the bottom or bottom left of all of these images. The next combo I'm using is Y13, Y15, and Y17. My Y15 is a chow, that's why it has a different kind of cap. And again, just starting with that Y17. For some of the little, littler images, just the Y17 and the Y15 was enough. But for the little ribbon on the gift and the balloon, I will use that Y13 for highlight. And this is another combo that I find always works really well together if you're looking for a good yellow combo that blends well. I'm going to finish up the rest of my images with my last combo, which is YG05, YG07, and YG09. And I'm just laying in that YG09 first on all of those images. 
and then I'll blend out with the YG07. For the dots on the hat, I added a little bit of it, and then I realized that they were really too small, so I'll just finish them with the YG05, and that will blend nicely with the YG09 on its own in that small space. So I'll just die cut these images out with the matching dies, and we'll move on to assembling our card. So I wanted to show you guys that this die does fit on a regular eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. I've cut mine down the center at five and a half, and this is going to be more than enough to make this card. I'm actually going to also die cut some pieces of grass using the Lawn Fawn Grassy Border die. And um, I had plenty using just that one piece of cardstock to cut out everything that I needed to assemble this card. So for the grassy borders, I just die cut those first with that grassy border die and then I die cut them a second time using that little insert die that comes with the pop-up box card. And I'm just going to cut those down on the score lines from that insert. I can just throw out those little pieces. And then I'm going to take some Tombow Mono Multi Glue and I'm just going to run a little tiny bit of liquid adhesive right up at the top of each of those little insert panels. And then I'm going to run another little bit of glue at the bottom of the grassy borders. And then I'm just going to take those and line them up right over top of the inserts. And I just want to make sure that the grass sticks far enough above that it's going to pop up and I actually made mine go at a little bit of a different level so that I'll have the shortest one in the front and the tallest grass in the back. You could also use score tape for this part but I was running really low on mine so I wanted to save it for the actual assembly that I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take my two pieces of my pop-up box card die and I'm going to fold and um, reinforce those score lines, just the vertical ones. I'm going to leave the horizontal score line alone for now. And then I am going to take my score tape and I'm just going to add a little bit to the outside tabs right here. This tape works really great for this purpose. This is the quarter inch uh, width of the score tape. And then I'm going to also use that on the little tabs. You want to leave those facing forward when you add your tape. And I was really running low here, so I was struggling to get one more piece. And that was the end of the roll. I did order another roll, but it hasn't arrived from Amazon yet. So I'll switch to this red line tape, which also works great. It's very strong. The only difference with this one is that you can't tear it, so you do need to use scissors. And I personally have a really hard time peeling the backer off, the little red portion of it. I just, for some reason, my fingernails can't seem to grab it. So I prefer the score tape, but you can use either. So now I'm just going to take those two pieces and line them up super straight on my craft mat and give that a good press. And then before I adhere the other side, I'm actually going to add my little inserts. And right here I edited out almost a full minute of me trying to peel off that backer sheet, so you're welcome. So I'm just going to line that little tab up with the two score lines, the one that's going vertical, and then I'm lining up the top of it with the horizontal score line that runs across the box card. I'm going to get my second and third tabs ready. This one I'm going to place towards the front. I don't want it to be right up front because I want to leave a little space um, for that to pop up and you know, not, not be right against the front of the card. And then I can center up this middle one right there. So then I'm just going to hold these tabs down and peel off those backer sheets. Score tape can be a little fiddly sometimes too, but it's not nearly as bad as the red line, but at least for me. So I'll just peel off that last little tab there and then I'm going to hold everything just how I want it, as straight as can be. And then I'm going to fold my card over Fold that little tab in and just press everything down into place. 
I'll give that a really good smush and then when I open it up everything is lined up where it should be and then I can fold down the side and front panels. I'm going to leave that top one up because that's going to be the back of our scene. And you can see that that is going to fold up nicely and fit inside an A2 envelope completely flat for mailing. So I'm just going to hold that down while I adhere my pattern paper. And these were die cut with the matching dies that are included in the pop-up box card die set. There are actually quite a number of dies in that set that um, have all kinds of accessories that I didn't even use on this card. But I'm just going to flip that over now so that I have that one showing so that I can get the next one down at the same height so that they will all be equal all the way around. I'll just press that down and then flip that over one more time to line up the last one there and I'll adhere that with some more Tombow Mono Multi Glue. You could also uh, adhere pattern paper to the top half um, since this is going to be the underside that's folded down I chose not to but you certainly could if you wanted to. So there are also dies that cut out these little rectangles to decorate the inside flaps of the pop-up box card and these are slightly smaller than the ones that go on the outside. So I've die cut the two end flaps with some pattern paper and I'm going to adhere those with some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. And then I've die cut the front one with some blue cardstock and then I'm actually taking the larger one for the outside for my back piece because I just want to frame that up nicely. I think it works well there and um, that's going to be my sky background. The smaller one we're going to set aside for now. We're going to stamp our sentiment on that later. But for now I just wanted to build up my card and I'm going to start with these two little clouds here. And I die cut those with the Lawn Fawn Spring Showers die set. There are actually three clouds included in that set. This is the medium and the small. And I'm just going to adhere one on either side of my sky background. And I'm actually going to be building my scene from the back to the front. I just find that's easiest with these box cards. Um, not that I'm an expert. This is only my second one, but I did them both this way. So I'm adhering my little balloons to the back of my scene and I'm adding two on the right side and then one over towards the middle left. And that's because I already know that my largest element, my mama elephant, is going to be going on the far left and I wanted you to still be able to see those balloons. So now I'm going to grab all my little characters here and I'm going to start adding the party hats. I want to do this before I add them to my scene. I just think it's easier to get this done ahead of time so that you're not trying to fiddle with them as they're standing up. It gives that glue a little bit of time to dry. You do want to be careful not to get glue anywhere that uh, will be exposed because you don't want any sticky parts. Um, that will hold your card together once you close it. You want it to be able to spring back open. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to be using mini glue dots to adhere these little critters to the scene. And that's because they're super small and that way there's no glue that's squishing out and I don't have to worry about the wet adhesive taking some time to bond to the paper while they're standing up there. And you can also add these little elements behind the grass or in front of the grass. So the mama elephant I added in front. The little baby I added behind the grass on the second row. I'm also just trying to stagger the elements left, right, and center so that you're able to kind of see everything as the card stands open. And nothing is kind of blocked too much by anything else. The one exception would be that dark pink balloon. If I could, I would move that over to the far left, but I did try and it immediately started tearing up the cardstock, so I had to just leave it as it was. But you can still kind of see it. 
So now I'm going to take my uh, front panel there and I'm going to stamp Let's Party from the Party Animals stamp set in some Lawn Fawn Mermaid ink. And I just went ahead and stamped that twice for a good impression. And then I'm going to take another little piece of this grass border that I die cut with that same die so it would keep the stitching all the way around. And I'm going to glue that down at the bottom of that panel. I'll add some Tombow Mono to the back of my little mouse and glue him down on the far left so that his hat doesn't cover up too much of that sentiment. And then I'm just going to figure out the spacing for my last two little elements. So I've got this little gift. And then I've got this little blowhorn. I don't know what these things are called. What are they called? Seems like I should know. But anyway, I'm just going to adhere that down overlapping a little bit. And then I can just take that and add that to my box card. Just line that up and hold that down for a few seconds so that liquid glue has a chance to set up. And that is going to complete our card. I kind of love how that yellow balloon looks like it's in the Mama Elephant's trunk when it's all straight. <laughs> it's kind of a happy accident how that happened. I think these pop-up box cards are just so fun, and though you certainly could make one without the die, in fact, I'll link in the cards up above to a video where I did create one before this die came out, but um, the die just makes it so much easier, and uh, it, it's, I think it's super fun. You can do them all sorts of different ways, and uh, yeah, I just love them. I think anybody would love to open up an envelope and have this card just pop out at them, so... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you'll go check out the new Lawn Fanatics challenge blog. It's going to be super fun and uh, you can use your Lawn Fawn products and link up and be part of the community and have a chance to win some awesome prizes. So check out the link in the description bar below the video for that and here's a couple extra videos you may also be interested in. And you can also click on my photo to subscribe to my channel for weekly cards and videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.